today I'm going to be playing the career of Jack Hughes. Currently at 22 years old, Jack Hughes is a 93 overall with high elite potential. So far this season, Jack Hughes has been looking absolutely incredible and it's easy to say he's one of the top players in the league right now. And with Hughes being one of the best young players in the league, of course, I got to play the rest of his career. So this is how it's going to work for the young Jack Hughes. For the next three years, I can manage the coaching staff that includes all coaches and scouts and I'm allowed to do all drafting for this team. On top of that, I'm allowed to play one postseason game per series, but there's a bit of a twist this time around. The second I jump into one playoff game and lose that game, I'm not allowed to jump in from any point after that. So if I play a game in the first round and I lose it, I can't play any games in round number two, the conference finals, or the Stanley Cup final. For the next five years after that, I'm allowed to make three moves per year, whether that's free agent signings or whether that's trades. And then once those five years are up, I'm going to have full control of the New Jersey Devils. I can make as many trades and as many signings as I want, and I'm allowed to do whatever I want with this team. But that's up until Jack Hughes drops below 90 overall, then the CPU is going to take over for the rest of his career. So we know how the video works. We know what the New Jersey Devils are looking like. Let's waste no more time here. Let's simulate to the end of the year and see what happens with this New Jersey Devils team. Because realistically, they should be one of the best in the entire league. Before season number one gets underway, though, Yara already know i still need to pass the detroit red wings and youtube subscribers so if you're new to the channel or haven't already subscribe what are you doing yeah so you remember how i was talking about how the new jersey devils are a fantastic team and i have high expectations for them well boy did they not exceed expectations 22nd in the entire league 40 36 and 6 yeah they were a massive disappointment there was only a handful of players on this team that weren't disappointments and jack hughes was one of them 93 points 32 goals 61 helpers i just gotta know what vanacek did this season these actually aren't that bad of numbers 32 wins six shots and 914 to 283 did we just not score goals this year or something he's looking at these numbers right here that's not that bad meanwhile in the postseason something that we weren't a part of the edmonton oilers are going to go on to win the stanley cup taking down the columbus blue jackets of all teams yeah you heard that right the columbus blue jackets made the stanley cup final at least we know this season's simulation was realistic so i guess all we can really pray for is a top pick but i'm not even sure if new jersey owns their pick luckily they do and we're going to be getting the wow we got first overall i was scanning around the 10 11 range looking for the new jersey devils and i couldn't even find it i didn't even process that we jumped from 10 to 1 and we just got the first overall pick this video is turning around real quick so we're officially on the clock with the number one overall pick who would have thought we would have gotten that and it looks like we're going to be drafting a defenseman because the top two projected picks are both defensemen. We could go with Berkeley Cat in here. I mean, that's not a bad decision. He has medium elite potential. He'll develop into something. But you know what? I think we got to go with the guy that's projecting number one. Slam dunk number one overall pick here. Where do I go with this guy? This is an offensive defenseman projected number two. Nah, I think we go with the guy projected number one. I think that's the safe bet here. So we have Jared Wim, a 79 overall, medium elite potential, 18 years old, two-way defended, first overall. He's probably going to be making the jump directly to the NHL next season. There is absolutely no reason that we should have got the first overall pick, but you know what? A win is a win is a win is a win. We're taking it. So outside of our first overall pick, this draft was incredibly bad. Like the best prospect we got outside of the first overall pick was like low top four potential. So yeah, not the greatest draft. So we've moved into year number two here. Not too much change with the forward core. Basically, it's the exact same. I guess there was a few changes. Curse Lazar is now here. So there's that. Defensively, that's where we saw the biggest changes. And that's coming on the third pairing as Tyson Berry has joined the team. I guess we gave him a bag. One year, 5.2 million. Not what I would have spent my money on, but I guess it helps. And then Danny DeKaiser, he's here as well. One year at 1.1 million. I guess that's a move. Then we go to the goaltending department. And Vanacek and Schmidt are going to be leading the way once again this year the only difference though is van he actually lost his x factor very sad day for new jersey fans this could be a difference maker meanwhile in the ahl it looks like we're giving our prospects a bit of time to develop here as the first overall pick is going to be playing some first line minutes down here and nemec he's going to be playing alongside our first overall pick so we have the number one overall pick and then a number two overall pick safe to say our defensive core is going to be in good hands in a few years so i was under the assumption that last season was a fluke and there's absolutely no way that this would happen again yeah, it actually happened again, and we were worse this season, 29th in the entire league. At least we own our first round pick, because it's going to be a top 5 one. How does this happen two years in a row now? Yeah, we're pretending this season didn't happen. Jack Hughes, 68 points. Vanacek, yikes. 
And then Schmid. That's an even bigger yikes. Colorado's winning the Stanley Cup. That doesn't matter too much. Let's see what draft pick we're getting. At the beginning of this video, I was given the CPU three years to take control of the New Jersey Devils. I'm about to change that rule. We're dropping from four to six, which isn't the biggest deal in the world because we're still going to have a fantastic pick. But yeah, I might have to step in a season early because I did not think it would be possible for the New Jersey Devils to be this bad. And to start us off with the sixth overall pick, we're selecting Porter Martone, a 74 overall, medium elite potential. He's going to be a good playmaker for us, 18 years old, of course. He's already got some factors so i'm expecting big things from this guy on top of picking up porter martone we're also going to be securing another playmaker this one's going to have medium elite potential though so we did make a couple additions to the team nothing major but the one question i have is why did we sign a 40 year old jeff carter like why was that actually a thing and why did we give him two years whoever's signing players is just not cooking not in the slightest also whims up to an 86 yeah he's him He's 19 years old and already up to an 86 overall. Meanwhile, Nemec's up to an 84. You know what? I'm making the executive decision to put him there. And then, Wim, you're going to the first line. I don't know why you would play under Siegenthaler. I want you to gain first line minutes this season. And then, Nemec, you'll get second line minutes with Siegenthaler. This is a nice top four. The rest of the team, a lot of question marks, but this is a nice top four. I mean, I shouldn't say the rest of the team. The top six here is great. The bottom six... Definitely some question marks, but we got guys like Holtz, so there is potential here. But all that hope of us being a good team is immediately lost here, as 82 overall Schmidt is our starting goaltender. Starting next season, I'm allowed to make moves. And the first move I'm making? Bringing in a top 10 goaltender. Then we'll truly see what this New Jersey Devils team can do. Okay, at this point, it's gotta be a joke, right? We're missing the playoffs once again. Three straight years, the New Jersey Devils have missed the postseason. 20th in the entire league, 39, 36, and 7. This ends now. I'm the coach next season. I'm the GM. I'm allowed to make three moves, whether that's free agent signings or trades. This team will be better. We might suck next season, though. I'm just going to say that right now. We might be getting rid of a few pieces. Tower Toffoli is probably going to be gone. Dougie Hamilton might be gone. Moves are going to be made. However, the moves will be made for the betterment of this team. Jack Hughes, I guess it's an okay season from you. 83 points. I'm expecting 100 though. I'm just going to be completely honest. Tower Toffoli, I'm going to be trading you because you're 34 years old. You're going to start declining soon. Dougie Hamilton, you're 32. You're going to be declining soon. I want to make sure I trade both of you guys while your value's at its highest. Also, we're going to fix the bottom six because having a guy that's minus 25 and then Eric Halla, who's minus 28, that's just not it. Dawson Mercer, you're minus 22. Okay, so our bottom six just didn't play defense, plain and simple. And then neither of our goaltenders knew how to stop a puck. That also didn't help. So far, the simulations have been such a disappointment that Anaheim Ducks have completed their rebuild and they're Stanley Cup champions. That's how long it's taken us so far. We're three years in and the Anaheim Ducks are Stanley Cup champions. Somebody's got to turn it around and I'm going to be the guy to do it. So we're not going to be getting as lucky in the draft lottery this time around, but we are still going to be securing the 13th overall pick. So far, the draft's looking pretty solid for us because with the 45th overall pick, we're going to be securing a medium elite potential goaltender. On top of that, we're also going to be getting another steal in the draft because with the 77th overall pick, we're getting a defensive defenseman who has medium elite potential. So with the re-sign phase all wrapped up, I'm allowed to take over now. I can make three moves per season and now it's time to save this new Jersey Devils team. I gotta look at the contract situation here because I gotta know what the CPU's been cooking up. Have they been doing anything smart so far? Doesn't really look like it. I mean, we got some nice pieces here, but we're not giving anyone long-term deals. Like Holtz, why did this man just get a one-year deal at $7 million? What was the point in that? On top of that, we also have a handful of players we gotta bring back, and I'm not sure if we're gonna have the cap space for all of these guys, so some tough decisions are definitely gonna have to be made here. But in saying all that, we're gonna be starting with Nico Heischer here. I'm giving him a six-year deal at $6.5 million. I wanna give Holtz a deal, but this man's not being reasonable. Like one year at 8.3, two years at 9.1. If you don't smarten up pretty quick here, you might be traded. Nemec, I also want to lock you down to a long-term deal because you're going to be one of our top defensemen in the future. So we'll do 5.2 million for the next eight years. Okay, so I need y'all to hear me out here. Tower Toffoli, he has fairly high trade value. I mean, he's 88 overall, 34 years old on a decent contract and he's got some X factors. But you know who's one player who has really low trade value that doesn't make any sense? for Tage Thompson 90 overall Tage Thompson at 28 years old he still has four years left on his deal his trade value is way lower than what it should be I'm going to figure out a way to get this deal done and if it can be as simple as Tower to Foley and Dawson Mercer then I won't complain but I highly doubt it's going to be that simple now if I add two more third rounders into this deal can we get it done that makes no sense the fact that we just got this deal done makes absolutely no sense 
but I'll take it. So I'm looking at getting a deal done like this. Dougie Hamilton, we got to face the facts that you're going to be aging out pretty quick. You're 91 overall at 33 years old and you only have two years left on your contract. For some reason, David Jiracek doesn't have a ton of trade value, even though he's an 89 overall at 22 years old, and he has all of these X factors right here. I want to try to pick up Jiracek, Texier, this guy right here, along with the first round pick, all for Dougie Hamilton. Obviously, we're going to need to add more to this deal, but I do think there is a world in which we get this done. So we'll start off with a second rounder of our own, as well as the prospect that's unsigned right now, and I'll send that over to the Columbus Blue Jackets. They're saying no, but we just got to up the value a little bit here, and then we'll get this deal done. Not gonna lie, I'm actually very surprised that we're getting a deal like this done so easily. We're getting Columbus's first round pick, so we're just gonna bank on them absolutely sucking. And there we go, we got the deal done. So this is gonna be a high risk, high reward deal. Our first round pick is gonna be sent over to the Minnesota Wild for Jesper Wallstead. He's an 88 overall, he's got a ton of X factors, he's incredibly young still, 23 years old. We're getting this deal done. Okay, we just gotta sweeten the touch a little bit. We'll add a seventh rounder to the deal, and then we're getting our goaltender. Jesper Wallstead is gonna be the future goaltender for this team, and I feel like the New Jersey Devils are finally back on the right track. So I've only been the GM here for one season, but you cannot tell me this isn't a playoff team. Hughes holds Timu Meyer on the first line, then Tage Thompson, Nico Heischer, and Jess Brown the second. The bottom six, it's going to be a work in progress over the next couple years here, but we got some nice pieces and I feel like it's going to be pretty solid. Defensively, we're looking great with Wilm and Jerichek as our top pairing. Then we got Nemec and Siegenthaler, Luke Hughes and John Marino. That's a pretty solid third pairing as well. John Marino, more than likely he won't be back next season, but the rest of these guys will keep the core around. And to finish it all off, of course, we got Jesper Wallstead in between the pipes for us, our starting goaltender in 89 overall. Look at all those X factors. The New Jersey Devils better be a top five team this season. That's all I'm going to say. Okay, I'm about to attempt to pronounce this guy's name, Vronkov. Probably said that incredibly wrong, but you know what? Who cares? He's getting a five-year deal with us at $1 million. Basically, he can fill in the bottom pairings here. He's a good fourth line piece. Why not keep him around? Okay, I don't know what's going on here, but the New Jersey Devils just completely stink. We made a high risk, high reward move, and so far it's not paying out for us because we don't own our first round pick. And the big thing that's annoying me right now, we're losing a lot of these games because we can't score goals. Like we just lost three to one, four to one. Do you remember who we have on our offense? Tage Thompson, Timu Meyer, Jesper Bratt, Jack Hughes. I mean, should be able to score. Also, we can't seem to keep the puck out of our own net either. We're allowing like five goals a game. What's wrong with this team? So I can't even explain in words what happened this season. There is no way the New Jersey Devils are this bad of a team. And to make things worse, we don't own our first round pick because I traded that for Jesper Wallstead. We finished dead last in the entire league and only won 28 games. You're telling me with that forward core we had, we're only scoring 2.88 goals per game and defensively, 3.57 allowed. How does that happen? We just brought in Jesper Wallstedt, so we have a fantastic goaltender. Defensively, we have so many great pieces here. What just happened with this New Jersey Devils team? Like, I just want to point this out right here. Jack Hughes had 98 points, and we only won 28 games. 98 points for him, 75 for Timu Meyer, Jesper Brad had 66, Tage Thompson, horrible season for you, only 62 points. What do I need to do to fix this team? The top six actually did really good. Scoring wise they were fantastic it was everyone that wasn't part of the top six i mean to be fair the second line had a terrible plus minus but outside of those guys nobody on this team could score texier pajot both of you are gone next season i just signed this guy but you know what i'm trading him away the bottom six is going to be strictly defense i'm going to try to find the best defensive players i can for the bottom six we're going to ride or die with our top six when it comes to scoring because I couldn't even explain what happened here. Goaltending wise, we're going to ignore these numbers here, but Wallstead, it's actually not as bad as I thought it would be. 25 wins, three shots, a 907 and a 323, but Schmid, you were playing way too much. 22 games played, you had a 314 and one record, an 886 and a 401. You know you're supposed to stop the puck as the goaltender, right? Just thought I'd give you that tip. All right, I'm making a statement here. From here on out, we're making the postseason. I might have made this exact same statement during the playoffs last season, but things are changing now. There is no reason we should be a 28 win team. I don't know what I'm going to do to turn this team around. I got to find a different coach. I also want to mention we're on like our fifth coach. For some reason, no coaches fit this team. None of them fit alongside Jack Hughes. None of them fit with Jesper Bratt. So far, the best coach we've had has had a team fit of like 45%. I don't even know what to say anymore. We got to find some answers. All I can say is I'm happy that Minnesota didn't get the first overall pick. 
However, they are getting the second overall pick and the third. Not gonna lie, I'm a bit annoyed about that. So with 129th overall pick, we're getting a medium elite potential goaltender, but I couldn't care less. So every single player on this list right here, unless I've sent them an offer or qualified them as an RFA, they're all gone. We're making massive changes to the team here. We're gonna go through a large turnover. And on top of all those guys leaving, so is Schmid. I never want to see this man again. So Wim, clearly if we're going to be a contending team, you got to stick around here. So I'm going to give you five years at 9.8 million. Siegenthaler, you're also a fantastic defensive defenseman for us. This is a bit of a long-term deal, but you know what? I can work with it. You're playing second pairing minutes for us and you're a fantastic piece. So here's six years at 4.7. And Luke Hughes, I'm sorry to say, we got to trade you away. You haven't shown any signs of development yet at 23 years old. You still have a lot of trade value and I want to maximize that in a trade. So we're trading you away. You were also minus 34 last season. That doesn't help your cause. Now for First trade seems like absolutely nothing here, but there's a couple of reasons I'm trading for Sean Lawton. One, he's an 82 overall. He'll fit on the bottom six here, but more importantly, he plays defense. We need somebody to play defense on our bottom pairings. His last season just wasn't it, so I'm acquiring him from the Boston Bruins. But in order to get this deal done, I gotta throw a fourth round pick in the deal. I'm perfectly fine with that. We got a good defensive piece. Our next trade's gonna be made with the St. Louis Blues as we're picking up Zachary Bolduc, a nice young 24-year-old A3 overall, but he plays defense, and that's what we need him for. So welcome to the New Jersey Devils. So this is gonna be our final move. Luke Hughes, this prospect, along with the second rounder, over to Ottawa Senators. We're gonna bring in Jacob Chickering for the next two years. Why is that? Jacob Chickering plays defense. We're also gonna be bringing in Ridley Gregg. Why is that? He plays defense. We need people to play defense on this team. That's the reason we're making this trade right here. And this trade will be completed after we add a third and fourth round pick to the deal. We need to succeed this season. There's a lot on the line this season. There is no reason that this team should be as bad as they are. We're ready to turn it around. Okay, you cannot convince me that this team right here is not competing for a Stanley Cup. The top six is incredible. The bottom six is actually pretty good as well. All of these guys play defense. Every single player on this team was brought in strictly to play defense. Well, maybe not Alex Turcotte. The CPU signed him, so yeah, we're gonna have to rock with that. But Texier, he plays a bit of defense. All of these guys are here strictly to play defense. Defensively, you cannot convince me that these guys can't keep the puck out of the net. Most of these guys here play incredibly good defense. Almost all of them are five stars. Prevent some goals this season. Meanwhile, when it comes to goaltending Jesper Wallstead, I'm gonna assume last season was a fluke and you're gonna bounce back this year. If you don't, then there's actually something fundamentally wrong with this game. There's no reason this team shouldn't succeed. Okay, at one point we were 30 and 18. We have just lost every single game since. You're telling me we won like what, eight games, but lost 25 in a row? No, this is stupid. I mean, it's not 25 in a row. We still won a few games here, but still. We lost so many games. For every win we got, five losses. This team was looking elite to start the year. Through the first half of the year, we were the best team in the entire league. Now I'm pretty sure we didn't even make the playoffs. I don't even know what this team anymore. Like seriously, there is no reason that Jack Hughes' career should be going out like this. We're the New Jersey Devils. We have some fantastic pieces here. Why can't we score? That's actually our problem. I think we were the best defensive team in the entire league. I actually want to double check this. We had a goals against under three. Where's that person in the entire league? Third. We had the third best defense in the entire league, but for some reason, we can't score. Worst team in the entire league when it comes to offense. Explain to me how this team right here cannot score. Jack Hughes, Jesper Bratt, Tage Thompson, Nico Heischer, Timu Meyer, Holtz. What's the issue? Like seriously, what's the issue? Five stars in shooting, five stars in shooting, four and a half stars in shooting, five stars in shooting, four and a half in shooting, five stars in shooting, and you're telling me none of you can put the puck in the back of the net. And then our bottom six, yeah, you guys did a great job keeping the puck out of the net. The problem was you don't score at all. Martone, you're an 84 overall with elite potential. You're picking up 21 points. What season are you in? This is your second year with the team. You went from 15 points to 21. I don't even know what to say anymore. Like, what do I actually do with this team? Because goaltending wise, Jesper Wallstead, 32 wins, three shots, a 927 and a 264. These are incredible numbers. We just don't score. 
Thank you for listening to my TED talk. All right, so I'm making an executive decision here and the video is currently changing. From here on out, I have full control of Jack Hughes' career. We're making the playoffs next season. No more withholding myself to only three moves per season. Yeah, we're done with that nonsense. I'm getting this man to the playoffs. I'm probably going to make eight moves next year. I'm going to do everything in my power to get this team into the playoffs. I'm sick and tired of this constant disappointment. We're going to score a lot of goals next season. I'm bringing in five snipers or five power forwards. I don't care what position you play. If you can put the puck in the back of the net, you're joining this team. So we didn't have many picks in the draft. We only had three and none of them were great outside of our 14th overall pick. He's got medium top six potential, nothing crazy. So the first thing we're doing, David Jircek, here's an eight-year extension at seven million dollars i think that's going to be a steal for us especially since you're a top pairing defenseman for us next up is going to be jacob checker in a three-year deal at 7.1 million dollars that's going to keep you on the team till you're 34 years old i'm perfectly fine with that contract right there now holtz you're gone you're gone and timu meyer are gone i'm making two trades and i'm getting rid of both of you and we're bringing in some goal scorers so we might as well get the trades underway here holtz and texier i'm sending both of you over to the nashville predators and we're bringing in kemmel they're saying no here but we're getting this deal done i don't care what i have to throw in a fourth rounder will probably be the difference maker so here you go we got kemmel never mind they also want a sixth rounder in order to get this deal done all right we brought in kemmel that's step one. So I'm going to give up the entire farm to the Vegas School Knights in order to get Vic back here. Medium elite potential player. He's an 86 overall and he can score goals. That's exactly what we need. I don't know what it's going to take to get him on the team. Well, actually, I know exactly what it's going to take. But am I willing to give up our next two first round picks? More than likely, if this trade doesn't work for us, you don't see this video. We got to sweeten the touch a little bit. So I'll take this guy out and throw a second rounder in. Because if we don't make the playoffs next season or don't improve drastically... More than likely, I'm going to be scrapping this video. So this trade better be working out for us. How are we not getting this deal done? What else do I need to throw in the deal? I guess we're throwing in a prospect. Do we have a really good prospect? I mean, we have this guy right here. Screw it. We need to score goals. We got finesse there. Like a monumental finesse. I'm going to regret that trade. I know I am, but you know what? Something has to work for us. So, I mean, we better give out a couple of extensions here. And Martone, I'll give you five years at 4.8 million. You're a great piece for us. You continue to improve and you might even get some top six minutes next season. Greg, we'll do three years at 2.2 with you. Not a bad deal. Well, Duke, I'll do three years at 2.025 million. I think that's a great deal as well. And then this young defenseman right here, four years at $3 million. He's actually not that young. He's 25 years old. That might be a bad deal, but you know what? Who really? Really cares at this point okay i'm gonna pay sam bennett a bag here i really don't care it's actually not that much of a bag 3.75 for the next two seasons that's a pretty cheap deal for an 85 overall and then marchenko i'll do a three-year deal at 2.5 million if you're willing to do that i think that actually works out for both sides here we'll do 2.2 actually okay sean mccormick you might be the game changer for us the reason i say that we have a 67 percent team fit that's by far the best we've ever had we have never had anyone even close to 67% before. So I think he could be the difference maker. Now, all I can ask for is a miracle. Jack Hughes, Vic Beck, Tage Thompson, Kemmel, Nico Heischer, Jesper Bratt, Sam Bennett, Zach Bolduc, Porter Martone, Marchenko, Greg, and then whoever this is. I don't care what y'all do this season, but y'all better play defense and y'all better score goals. Here's the defense. This should be good enough. A 90 overall and an 88. We're getting a plus two overall boost. We're getting boosts across the board here. That's good enough. And then goaltending. Jesper Wallstead is a 92 overall. That should be more than enough for this team to win some games and make the postseason. We have a new coach. We have an incredible team here. The only way you see this upcoming season is if we make the playoffs. So that better happen. Here we are, fourth in the entire league, 51, 25, and six, scoring 3.57 goals per game, only allowing 2.9. 2.9 would definitely be at the top of the league. It's fourth in the entire league. The New Jersey Devils are here. We finally got this team rolling on all cylinders. Through all the disappointment and craziness that's been going on, I completely forgot this was a Jack Hughes video. So here he is, 91 points, 34 goals, 57 helpers. I'm just happy this team's in the postseason. Victor Beck, what'd you do? You only had 27 goals, but hey, you had 68 points. Can't really complain too much about that. Kemmel had 71 points. Now, the only issue we're going to have here is keeping this entire team together. Now, on top of keeping the entire team together, we got to make sure this man stays happy. Jesper Wallstead, 43 wins this season, 5 shots, a 919, a 266. Next 
next season, we're bringing in a new backup. Schmid, you suck. That's the nicest way I can say it. And on top of all these great things happening, here we are in the postseason. We got the New York Islanders in the first round. I really want to jump into one of these games. But you know what? I'm not sure if I will. Just because of the way things have been going, I'm not sure if it would make sense for me to jump into a game here. So right now, we're currently down 2-0 in game number 2 here, but we're also down 1-0 in the series. I don't really want to fall to a 2-0 deficit here, so I better jump into this one. So if we want to make this comeback here, we got to score some big goals fast, and with the full pressure meter maxed out, it looks like Marchenko is going to be picking up our first goal here. And just a couple minutes after that one, the Islanders are going to be on the power play here, but we're the ones going to work. Nico Heesh is going to make a nice move here, and he's going to rip this one past the goaltender, and this game's all tied up. But you know what? I don't really feel like going to overtime here so let's let the team cook here tage thompson's absolutely deacon around everyone here he's gonna rip this one past the goaltender and we have a 3-2 lead and we're not gonna be looking back after that one and we're gonna be making the big comeback in this game however this is a bit of a mickey mouse win here because i thought i had it set on all-star difficulty it was actually set on pro difficulty so every game from here on out is on all-star difficulty i switched it right after this game because something just didn't seem right so you're telling me after i clutched that game up and brought us back from a two goal deficit in the final 10 minutes you're gonna lose three straight including two shutouts nothing good happens in new jersey that's for sure so to finish out the postseason here we're gonna see the toronto maple leafs taking down the colorado avalanche in seven games to hoist the stanley cup now normally i'd be very upset with a first round exit such as this but we finally made the playoffs after all the years of constant disappointment we got into the playoffs here so i'm not really going to complain too much but if y'all don't make it to the conference finals next season then we're going to have issues we're not really going to look too much into these numbers nobody had a great postseason and Jesper Wallstead, we're not even going to look at yours. So although we're not going to have too many picks in this draft, we are going to be getting a solid one here with the 155th overall pick. We're securing a lowly potential sniper. So this is where things get really interesting for the New Jersey Devils. We got to re-sign Hughes, Thompson, Kemmel, and Beck. On top of that, we also have to re-sign Jesper Wallstead. I don't know how much money we have, but we definitely don't have enough to work with. We only have 29 million. This is going to be difficult, and we're going to have to make some tough decisions. Of course, Jack Hughes needs to return, so we're going to do a six-year deal at 10 million dollars that's going to leave us 19 million dollars in cap space so i think we're going to be starting with this deal right here just for brad over to the carolina hurricanes we're going to pick up hoglander he's a good two-way forward plays some great defense but also he fits on every forward line he's only 28 years old he's on a good contract i don't think we're going to be able to get two second rounders but if we can at least get one then i'll be happy so there we go the deal is done and we're freeing up a bit of cap space in this move as well okay i don't know what kind of cap gymnastics i'm about to perform but we're going to find a way to keep all these these guys together everyone except for tage thompson so beck i'm going to bring you back on a five-year deal at 10.8 million all right i did not think this deal was going to get accepted i thought there was zero chance it would actually go through so we just traded camel over to the anaheim ducks not only did we pick up mason mctavish the main piece i wanted to get but you know what i decided you know what why not let's throw a first rounder in this deal for next season i don't know why anaheim would ever accept that deal but you know what we got mason mctavish here he can play some top six minutes for us he's on a five-year contract at seven million dollars i'll take it also we need a backup goaltender and i'll take anyone not named schmid so capo kakinen welcome to the team so through all the cap gymnastics i think i figured out a way to bring back wallstead and first we got to start with this move because we got to trade some pieces that we just acquired too now the only reason we took on wallstrom in that last deal is so the rangers would be under the salary cap so now they are we can trade him to the dallas stars wallstrom's not going to be the only piece that's getting flipped here because we're also going to be sending michael mcleod somewhere i really don't care where he gets sent i'll just pick some random team he's going to the edmonton oilers why not and after all those moves we made we still have to make one more and that's going to be this one right here marchenko over to the new york islanders we're going to be picking up here angval for this one season we're also getting a fourth rounder in the deal but finally we've cleared enough money up for the jesper wallstead extension so we're giving him six years at 8.6 million now after everything's said and done here we are going to be losing tage thompson next season but you know what we're going to keep him around for this season we're going to go for a stanley cup because we got ourselves a fantastic core here this is basically the last dance for tage thompson with us so here we go the new jersey devils are here and they're ready to run it back vic beck jack hughes tage thompson that's going to be our first line a plus five for line chemistry then we're going to have porter martone nico heischer and mason mctavish on that second line the third line here is looking absolutely fantastic and so is the fourth line we have a great bottom six starting next season hoglander he's gonna be playing on the top line alongside jack hughes and vic beck but for this season we're gonna have him on the third the defense continues to look absolutely fantastic and lindstrom what a pickup that was i was a bit concerned about his line fit but him on the third line alongside siegenthaler they're getting that plus two overall boost 
things are looking absolutely fantastic here. And on top of the defense looking great, Jesper Wallstead still our man, Kapo Kakinen, it's going to be very hard for you to do worse than Schmid. Because that guy was worse than mid. He was just straight garbage. So let's run it back again this season. Get ourselves into the postseason. And let's do some damage this time. Now I'm not going to lie. There was something very funny that happened this season. So we're going to be finishing third here. 50, 25, and 7. But the Anaheim Ducks averaging almost 5 goals a game. Yeah, we better watch out for that team. Because they're firing on all cylinders right now. But this is the funny thing that happened this season. Tage Thompson finally played good for us. He's not coming back next season. Once he found that out, he's like, you know what? I'm going to have a career year and I'm going to get the bag. This man picked up 94 points. Last season, he had 75. The year before that, he had 61. You're telling me the second he's about to get a bag, he's like, nah, I'm going to turn into him and I'm going to pick you up 94 points. I'm not going to complain about 94 points. But it is pretty funny. Jack Hughes, he's picking up 90. Victor Beck, he's picking up 80. Sorry, not Victor Beck. Vic Beck. Nico Heischer, 66 points. Nah, but ain't no way Tage Thompson decided to have his career year now. Meanwhile, Jesper Wallace dead 39 wins, 3 shots, and 9 11 and a 267. I want these numbers to continue into the postseason because I want to see this team hoist the Stanley Cup. So let's focus up right now because I don't want this team losing in the first round. Let's make quick work of the Washington Capitals here. So right now, things are looking fantastic for the New Jersey Devils. They currently have a 2 0 lead in the series and right now in game three we're tied five to five so i'm going to finish this game off for us so this was a tough game against the washington capitals right here but we're getting an incredibly lucky bounce vic beck's going to find the puck wide open in front of the net and he's going to bury this one so after picking up that massive ot winner we're going to end up losing game four here but that's going to be perfectly fine because we're going to close this series out in five games so we're moving on to the second round here the first time the new jersey devils have been here in quite a long time and it looks like we're going to be matching up against the florida panthers so currently things aren't going too well for us we're down 2-1 in this series and we're also down 2-1 in game four here so i better step into this one to make sure we can win it unfortunately in the final minutes of this period we're going to be putting on all the pressure possible but spencer knight he's going to stand on his head here he's making fantastic save after fantastic save and we're going to be dropping this one two to one there's not really too much more i could have done in this series we just ran to a hot goaltender but i shouldn't act like the series is over we're only down three to one and we could make the comeback now i did say the series wasn't technically over because we were down three one well, we're not down 3-1 anymore. We're actually off to the conference finals because we just made a 3-1 series comeback. We won three straight games after I was unable to get the team back into this one. And we're off to the conference finals. I'm not going to complain about that. The only thing that sucks though... I can't jump into any more games in the postseason because I lost that one. So we've moved on to the conference finals here and it looks like the Tampa Bay Lightning continue to be a dominant team in the NHL and that's who we're matching up against in 2030. We're in the year 2030 and the Tampa Bay Lightning are still a dominant team. Ain't no way. So this series against the Tampa Bay Lightning has been going back and forth the entire way and after dropping game 6, we're going to be ahead to game 7. So here we go, game 7, winner makes it to the Stanley Cup. We're not going period by period, we're just going to simulate the entire game here. Nikita Kucherov's going to score the OT winner and we're eliminated. That's incredibly disappointing. And Tage Thompson, you're not even going to be back next season, you're going to be leaving, and you had an incredible postseason run, 13 goals, 9 assists, 22 points. Why did you have to have your best season in your final year with the team? Something about this just doesn't sit right with me. And to finish it all off, the Tampa Bay Lightning, they're going to be taking home the Stanley Cup here in a six-game series over the Chicago Blackhawks. So if we were able to beat the Tampa Bay Lightning, more than likely we're bringing home the Stanley Cup. And it's going to be hard for this team to be even better next season. As we know, we're going to be losing Tage Thompson. Jack Hughes, he was pretty solid, 21 points in 19 games. Vic Beck, 19 points in 19 games. We'll find a way to improve this team, but it's going to be tough because ain't no way we're going to be better after losing Tage Thompson. So you know what? We might not have been able to win a Stanley Cup, but we are going to be getting some W's in the draft here as we're going to be starting off with a lowly potential defenseman 61st overall in the draft. And the great drafting is going to continue because with the 114th overall, we're going to be securing a medium elite potential goaltender. But did you think that was going to be the only elite drafting? 157th overall, another lowly potential defenseman. But we're not done there because we're going to be selecting our fourth elite potential player here with the 189th overall pick we're getting a low lead potential sniper so considering how many picks we had in the draft here four elite potential players i'll take that as a win but unfortunately tage thompson i got some bad news we're just not going to be able to afford you here how much are you looking for anyway 12 million dollars we have 4.5 and then hopefully we can sign this low lead potential player 23 years old he's an 81 what's he looking for he's looking for 4.2 million we could probably make that work. So making the cap situation here work is going to be very difficult. But this lowly potential player, I'll give you a two-year deal at 2.8 million. And then we got to figure out how to fill out the bottom six here. 
Because right now, we don't have money for the bottom six. Now, what I'm trying to do here is not trade all of our prospects away, but in this trade, we're actually getting a young player. He's an 82 overall, 21 years old. He can jump into the lineup right now, whereas this guy at 19 years old, he's only a 69 overall. So he's still got a few years to develop. Well, this guy can play for us right now, and that's actually exactly what we need. I guess we're not going to be getting the fourth rounder here, but you know what? I'm perfectly fine with that. We get the guy we needed. So I'm also really hoping we can get this deal done right here. Tanner Janot, a one-year deal at 1.5 million. He plays good defense he'll fit on the bottom six here and that's what we need him for so here's what the team's going to be looking like for this season obviously we're taking a step back without tage thompson but i truly believe that jack hughes can lead the way for us we still got vic beck here he's a 90 overall nico he's a 90 martone's an 87 we have a pretty solid core here defensively we're going to be looking the exact same here except lindstrom won't be back next season because he wants like four million dollars and i'm not giving him four million dollars to play on the third pairing that's just not going to happen there's also a good chance siegenthaler is not here next season because he's 33 years old he's going to be declining and i'm not too sure what he's going to be looking like he probably won't be worth his contract to finish it all off of course we've got jesper wallstead in between the pipes capo kakinen is going to be backing him up two fantastic goaltenders let's get back into the postseason and let's make another deep run ain't no way that tage thompson meant this much to the new jersey devils to the point where we're probably going to miss the playoffs here unless we keep this win streak going because now the team's actually playing up to expectations the entire year they've looked like absolute crap but here they are they're actually picking it up there's a good chance we make the playoffs here as long as we keep winning okay i think we're good i think it's safe to say we're gonna make the postseason here for the longest time this team was playing like absolute crap but we're going on a massive win streak here to finish the season off and we're just getting into the playoffs man we got lucky so clearly the new jersey devils were not a good team this season we're finishing 14th in the entire league but there is one good thing about us being 14th in the entire league here we're actually a lot better than what our record says because when you look at wins we're one of the top teams in the entire league only four wins back of the first place chicago blackhawks we just didn't lose any games in overtime all of our losses came in regulation not really too much we can do about that Hughes is having a great season like usual. He's got 95 points, 35 goals, 60 helpers. Vic Beck, 38 goals, 38 assists, 76 points. I'm expecting a bit more from you. I'm going to be honest. You're playing first line minutes. You got to be averaging at least a point a game. Meanwhile, the goaltending numbers this season. Yeah, that's definitely not it. 40 wins, 3 shots, an 897 and a 313 for Jesper Wallstead. Now that I've seen these numbers, I'm a bit more concerned with the team. At first, I thought, you know what? We just didn't lose any games in overtime. It happens. But then I saw these numbers. Now I'm starting to think we're just not that good of a team but if any team's going to exceed expectations here that's going to be the new jersey devils we have the carolina hurricanes in the first round let's complete a massive upset here and go on a run although the new jersey devils are competing with the carolina hurricanes currently we're down 2-1 in the series and right now in game four it's tied 1-1 if anyone's going to score the ot winner of course it's got to be me there's no way this backfires on us no way at all now hogwinder i'm going to be completely honest here i was not this familiar with your game i did not know you had a shot like this that was an absolute rocket right there and you're picking up the big ot winner now this overtime goal from seth jarvis right here it hurts it hurts a lot more than you can imagine because that was in game seven we had a 3-2 series lead ended up losing two straight one of them seven to two and we're eliminated in the first round here so it's not overly surprised we're losing in the first round here but it's still a massive shame because i do believe we are a better team than what our record showed we still don't have a lot of cap space we're going to be losing one or two pieces over the off season but you know what i think i'm going to make a couple moves here and we'll improve the roster so we've moved into the draft here and you already know i'm going to be picking up some good prospects and we're going to be starting with the 51st overall pick we're getting a medium elite potential goaltender the solid drafting is going to continue with the 179th overall pick we're going to be getting a low elite potential defensive defenseman and to finish it all off here with the 211th overall pick another low elite potential player this one's a playmaker though so we're going to hand out some extensions here in zach bull duke two years at 1.7 million i can definitely work with that the next extension we're giving out here is going to be to lindholm three years at 2.7 you do a great job on the bottom six here so i'll keep you around at that price and then our other guy right here one year at 1.1 million steal the deal all right so lindholm actually rejected his first offer so we'll try this three years at 3.2 million and the same thing happened with bull duke so we'll try two years at 2 million hopefully they both accept these deals if not we're gonna have to find a workaround so bull duke he's gonna be happily accepting this deal and so is lindholm so we're good in that department so i'm looking at this deal right here siegenthaler you've done great things for the franchise but 4.7 million not really worth your contract anymore although you're an 84 overall you're definitely going to decline at 34 years old we're going to pick up these two young defensemen from calgary and we should be in a better spot okay the one thing that i'm really annoyed about with nhl 24 is once you get deeper into the sim explain to me why an 80 overall is asking for six million dollars 
You're an 80 overall at 23 years old, my guy. That's not happening. So Jacob Chickner, I'm not going to be able to afford to bring you back next season. And also, you do have a bit of trade value right now, so why don't I trade you? I'm going to send you over to the San Jose Sharks along with this lowly potential player we have. Mads is asking for like $6 million, and he's on the bottom six, so that doesn't make any sense for us. I'm going to try to pick up these three players from the San Jose Sharks. I actually think there's a good chance this deal goes through. All right, they're going to be saying no to this one, but we got some draft picks to work with. So our two fourth rounders going to be enough to be the difference maker here? I guess they are and just like that the deal is done so we're gonna start off with spence here a four-year deal at 2.7 i would say that's a steal of a deal and then phil Pula, five years at 2.7 I'll make that deal. We also have a bit of extra cap space here, so I'll give Noah Cates a one-year deal at 3.2 million. He can definitely help with the bottom six. So we're back with another season here. Jack Hughes at 30 years old. He's yet to show any signs of declining, and that's a good thing because this team's yet to win a Stanley Cup. The top six here it looks fantastic, while the bottom six, it can definitely hold it down. Now the defense definitely needs to be addressed. The first pairing is fantastic like usual, while the second pairing that definitely took a step back, losing Chikrin, but Sam Dickinson, I think he can step into this role. Meanwhile, the third pairing, we're not going to talk about it and if things couldn't get worse somehow at 28 years old just where wall decline, decline he's dropped to an 88 overall all signs are pointing to us missing the postseason this year and i'm fully expecting that okay so i don't even know what to say anymore about 15 games ago we were first in our division with a four point lead i'm not kidding about this we're currently last in our division now we had a four point lead or what i say three point lead four point lead i don't know it was like a three or four point lead in our division we proceeded to lose like 12 straight games this team completely fell apart we were like 28 13 and 5 or something we were first in our division we were one of the best teams in the entire nhl this team then proceeded to basically lose every single game i don't know what's wrong with the simulation we start the season off incredibly well and then the team just completely folds losing every single game after that i don't even know what to do anymore what do I have to do to get this team to perform? Like Jack Hughes, 98 points, great season. Vic Beck, he's having the best season of his career, picking up 52 goals here. The plus minus on this team, not even that bad. Like, yeah, we have a few guys here in the minus. That's definitely not ideal. The bottom six was bad. The bottom pairing was bad. But even still, really? How are we going from first in our division by a three-point lead, four-point lead, whatever it was, to missing the playoffs? This certainly doesn't help Jesper Wallstead playing like absolute hot garbage. What has happened the past two years? This was two seasons ago when Tage Thompson was on the team. Tage Thompson leaves and this is what happened. Thompson was the only player that left. We lost one guy, Tage Thompson. He went from a 911 to an 897 and then he went from a 267 to a 313. And things just keep getting worse the following year. I'm convinced the simulation is cursed at this point. We have a good coach. We have a good team here, but for some reason, we just can't win. Like, I want you to look at this Colorado Avalanche team right here. They're very top-heavy. Quinton Byfield, Nathan McKinnon, Miko Rantanen, David Pasternak. Here's the rest of their forward core. They have 75 and 74 overalls here. And you might have just thought, oh, they probably just have an incredible defense. They have Bo Byron, Mikhail McCarr. The rest of these guys stink. And then to finish it off, they have 84 overall Carter Hart in between the pipes and a 76 overall backup. Where do you think the Colorado Avalanche finished in the standings? They were first. That Colorado Avalanche team went 59, 16, and 7, scoring four goals a game and only allowing 2.7. So I guess it's actually important if we pay attention to the draft lottery results, seen as we were one of the worst teams in the entire league, we're going to be getting the eighth overall pick. So I just want to point out how good this draft was up until we made our selection. Basically, every single player that was drafted was almost an 80 overall. I mean, that's absolutely capped. This guy was a 73, this guy was a 64, but the guy that was drafted sixth overall was an 80. We got a 63 overall player that has top six potential. We're deep in the trenches right now. Like this team can't get out of them. We would be able to secure a prospect here that has low lead potential, but honestly, who cares? We've secured so many players that have low lead potential. And so far, none of those guys have developed for us. Now I'm not gonna lie. This team has been annoying me so much. We're going through turnover this season. And when I say we're going through turnover, half the team's getting traded. We're bringing an entirely new core in next season. I don't care what it takes. We're going to average five goals a game, whatever it takes. But the first thing you got to do is give Wilm an extension here, 11.8 for the next seven. You better stick around with this team. Ain't no way this happened. Marchenko's developed into an 87 overall. He played with us and recorded 29 points. The second he left, a 51 point season, a 76 point season, a 65 point season. The simulation legit hates me today. 
I don't know what it is. So here we go with move number one. We're picking up Sullivan from the Boston Bruins. He's an 89 overall sniper. That's deal number one. Or I thought it was going to be deal number one. We'll throw in some prospects. We added a medium elite potential goaltender into the deal and we're getting it done. And then the deal we're giving O'Sullivan is going to be a bit of an expensive one. 10 million per year for the next six seasons. But as long as this man can score goals, I don't care what numbers he puts up. So deal number two is going to be made with the Calgary Flames. We're going to be shipping Martone over there. We're going to try to pick up Nicholas. I'm going to call him Nicholas. I think it's the easiest way to pronounce that name. Oscar Nicholas. 86 overall. He's got an X factor. He's a decent enough playmaker. We're also going to pick up Green Tree. I actually didn't expect us to get both of those players, but hey, we'll definitely take it. Sam Dickinson's going to turn out to be one of the most reasonable players in the NHL. A six-year deal at $5.3 million for an 84 overall. That's probably one of the best contracts in the league. Because for some reason, once you hit an 80 overall, everyone seems to think they're worth $9 million. Like, here we go, right here. 81 overall, 19 years old. How much does he want for an extension? $6 million makes sense the next trade we're making is with the philadelphia flyers we're gonna be picking up lidstrom here 86 overall he's got an x factor he can score goals welcome to the team welcome to the team after we add a second rounder into the deal so when i said we're going through massive turnover this season i wasn't kidding mason mctavish over to the washington capitals we're gonna get Ryder richie and two fourth rounders never mind can we get at least one fourth rounder we're going one for one here and mctavish straight up for Ryder richie I guess we have to throw a prospect in this deal, but I really don't care. Ryder Ritchie, welcome to the New Jersey Devils. So obviously our bomb six needs to start putting the puck in the net a bit more. So Francisco Pinelli, you're a playmaker, 2.4 million for the next two seasons. What's the worst that could happen? You're not the greatest defensively, but you can pass the puck and that's what we need. Spence, I'm going to keep it a buck. I thought you would play a bigger role with this team, but that turns out to not be the case. So you're off to Arizona for two seventh rounders. We just got to get rid of the contract. So O'Sullivan said no to our first contract because we didn't have cap space for him. But now we can sign him to a six-year deal at 8.2 million. So I'm going to be honest, I don't know how much faith I have in this team. Vic Beck, Hughes, Richie on the first line. As you can see, Ryder Richie has no line fit here. That's because we brought in a new coach who focuses strictly on offense. This this team is built to score goals every line has at least a playmaker a sniper and then ideally a two-way forward except for the fourth line here they're here to play defense defensively we're actually pretty solid here again a plus two overall boost on the first and second pairing on the third pairing who cares about this we'll work with it meanwhile the goaltending situation Jesper Wallstead continues to decline even though he's only 29 years old he's dropped to an 87 we're either going to finish first in the entire league or we're finishing dead last no in between okay there's a lot of things that happened this season that make no sense to me first the Colorado Avalanche are once again first in the entire league we already know what that team looks like how they keep finishing first in the entire league doesn't make any sense to me we finished fifth with a 46 28 and 8 record our offense wasn't necessarily the greatest in the world our defense was pretty good though here's the thing that confuses me O'Sullivan was our leading scorer with 72 points 72 points Beck had 70 Nicholas had 70 Jack Hughes had 65 the worst season of his career by far he's dropped to a 94 overall only as elite potential what is going on he went from 98 points to 65 in one year we're fifth in the entire league Jesper Wallstead, what'd your numbers look like? Nothing insane. 32 wins, zero shots, a 908, and a 289. I think we're frauds. I'm pretty sure this team is just full of frauds. But whether we're frauds or not, we better win a Stanley Cup. This could potentially be the last dance, because who knows where this New Jersey Devils team is going to be next season. Who would have saw this one coming? The New Jersey Devils being absolute frauds. Currently, we're down 3-2 in the game, but we're also down 3-2 in the series, so this is a must win for us, so I better jump in. And to make things even worse, we're playing Tage Thompson. He's now on the New York Rangers. We're cooked. Yeah, so the easiest way to explain this right here, we just got incredibly unlucky against the New York Rangers. There were so many bad bounces against us, nothing we could do. Yeah, so I completely give up with us coming back in this game right here. O'Sullivan's going to bring the puck in. He's going to throow it towards the net. I was hoping for a deflection here, but no, just striking. He's going to make the big save here with the poke check. We're going to tee this one up because Nicholas is going to be in the perfect spot. It hits our own player. Shesterkin's not getting across to save that. We would have scored there. Like, ain't no way we're getting this unlucky. Tomasino, he's going to take a shot towards the net here. You know, Jesper Wallace, he's in a great spot. He's going to make this save, right? It deflects off Connor Zeri's stick right to whoever this is. Man, ain't no way we're getting this unlucky right now. Like, Jesper Wallace is going to make this save, but it just happens to deflect off of his stick wide open to the guy in front. We cannot catch a break here. 
So the New York Rangers were actually a pretty solid team because they're going to make it all the way to the Stanley Cup final here, but the Colorado Avalanche are winning the Stanley Cup. I am very curious to see what that Colorado Avalanche team look like, but I also don't want to look at the Colorado Avalanche because ain't no way that team just won a Stanley Cup. Outside of the first line and David Pasternak, we already know this team has nothing. Jack Hughes, it was a good postseason from you, seven points in six games. Unfortunately, you're a 94 overall now with elite potential. I think you should have one more season above a 90 overall, but if you drop below a 90 and the CPU takes over, I'm not too sure how successful this New Jersey Devils team is going to be without me. Then again, even with me as the GM, they haven't been successful, so who knows what's going to happen. Like usual in the draft, we're going to be securing a couple of elite potential players here, and we're going to be starting with a low elite potential with the 153rd overall pick. And we're going to be securing another low elite potential player here, and that's going to be with the 185th overall. And to finish the draft off in the 7th round with the 217th overall pick, we're getting another low elite potential player. So we got to start giving out some extensions here in Lindstrom. He's a good piece for our team right here. He's an 88 overall, so I'll give five years at 7.9 million he's developing into a pretty solid player so we better keep him around green tree on the other hand you've been a productive player for us so six years at 5.2 million i'm not going to complain about that so this is the move we're going to be doing Ryder richie along with the second round picks going to be sent to the seattle kraken we're going to pick up ian siffers here he's an 81 overall two-way forward he fits on the bottom six Ryder richie just doesn't fit on the team we're playing him first line minutes even though he doesn't have a good fit on the first line meanwhile green tree has a much better fit so i think that's where we're going to play him we're going to try to get this deal done free the eight million dollars i'm not sure what else we're gonna give up though i guess we could also give up this defenseman right here because he is looking for six million dollars and he's only what an 82 overall i'm not paying you six million dollars as an 82 overall that's just crazy so that deal basically can get it done but you know what we gotta throw a seventh rounder in because that's the difference maker and we got this deal done with the seattle kraken and the best part about this guy we picked up from the seattle kraken we're going to be getting him on an incredibly cheap deal here we'll do 2.3 million for the next eight seasons so i wasn't 100 percent sure about bringing nicholas back but you know what i've changed my mind about that six years at 9.5 he's a second line player for us he's a great playmaker he's got a handful of x factors i think we should keep him around the team would definitely be worse without him so the top six here absolutely fantastic definitely one of the best in the entire league it's definitely better than what the colorado avalanche were they had four good players that's about it also miko rantanen retired so i'm really curious to see what that team does this season our bottom six it looks pretty good except for this guy right here yeah we have a 74 overall in the fourth line I'm curious to see what he can do. Our defense is pretty good here up until you get to the third pairing. Yeah, we're just going to see what these two guys can do. Plain and simple. I mean, this guy's a defensive defenseman. He should be able to keep the puck out of the net. And this guy's a two-way defender. He plays decent defense. That's really all I need from them. Play good defense. You can score zero goals this season. You can record zero points. But as long as you play good defense, I'm not going to complain. And to finish it all off here, Jesper Wallace said 30 years old. He's back up to an 89 overall. He's got all of his X factors. I need a Vesna season from you. I need you to play the greatest season you've ever played in your entire life. And I need it right now. So I've actually changed my mind. I don't want a 74 overall playing for us on the fourth line. So you're going to be picking up this guy from the Buffalo Sabres. And after trading for him, we're going to give him a one-year deal at 1.4 million. And we'll see what he can do. All right, I need to seriously know who is on the Colorado Avalanche because they're the only team that finished ahead of us. 53, 23, and 6. Who is on this Colorado team still? Miko Rantanen's gone. Last time I looked at this team, they had five players. But first, I do want to highlight this incredible season from Jack Hughes where he put up 105 points. Still 91 overall, so maybe we can run it back next season, but it's going to be tough. So the Colorado Avalanche, the only team that finished above us in the standings, I can't buy it. Quentin Byfield, Nathan McKinnon, who's 38 years old, and David Pasternak. The second line's not that great. I mean, 33 years old, 35, 35. I'm sorry, but this is a retirement home here. The third line, it's okay. The fourth line, it's also okay. I mean, I see a lot of former players that we've had, but you know what? How are you ahead of us? Like, seriously. Okay, this is a joke. An 80 overall and a 79 overall. How are y'all ahead of us? You know what? We're not going to worry about the Colorado Avalanche being ahead of us. I'm convinced the simulation is broken right now. We have the New York Islanders in the first round. I don't care about the first round. I don't care about the second round. Don't care about the conference finals. All I care about is the Stanley Cup final and us finally hoisting a Stanley Cup for Jack Hughes. We should probably have three or four by now, but we're yet to make it out of the second round. So, I mean, we've been in the trenches to say the least. So, right now, things are looking fantastic for the New Jersey Devils. We have ourselves a 3 1 lead in the series. A logical person would have the CPU sim this based on what happened last time I jumped in. As we know, I'm not a logical person. Let me score the OT winner. So, before you get absolutely gassed by this elite shot from nicholas we gotta watch the instant replay okay so this goal looked way cooler when i scored it in game i thought i went bar down short side it was a beautiful goal 
Yeah, what just happened here? Why was this not saved? It literally went inside the goaltender's glove right here. All he has to do is not move his glove and it's inside and he makes the save. Nope. Something's going to happen here. He's just going to miss the puck. The puck's literally in his glove. Like fully in his glove here. Nah. Ain't no way. So after that wild overtime goal, we're off to the second round here. But you know who's not off to the second round? The Colorado Avalanche. Reality's setting in for that team. They're out in the first round. But you know what? I don't care about the Western Conference right now. I'm focused on the Eastern Conference. And we have the Blue Jackets up next. So the Columbus Blue Jackets are definitely able to put up a fight against us. But it's not going to be enough because we're going to get through the second round here in a seven game series. I think outside of our next matchup, we've only made the conference finals once. And we had a massive collapse there. So hopefully the same thing doesn't happen. So here we are in the conference finals. And as I just said, I believe this is the second time we've made the conference finals in this video. Let's make the Stanley Cup final. Like straight up. Let's just get to the Stanley Cup final and get Jack Hughes one Stanley Cup before he retires. Game seven. We're down three to two here. We win this game. We go to the Stanley Cup final. I'm jumping in. I've been locked in the past few games. It's actually a lie. Other than that glitchy goal that we scored, I have not been playing that great. But you know what? It's time that I close this out. I want to be the guy that sends Jack Hughes and the New Jersey Devils to the Stanley Cup final. I got to be the guy to do it. So in games like this, we need our big time players to make big time plays. And although Green Tree is going to be scoring the goal to tie this one up, we got to give a massive shout to Nicholas for that elite pass. Now, I shouldn't call it an elite pass because he did lose control of the puck, but you know what? A goal is a goal, and we're going to take it. And that green tree goal is going to be the last one of the third period, so here we go. Next goal wins. We're off to overtime. Jack Hughes, a breakaway to send us to the Stanley Cup final. He's going to close it out here. Jack Hughes, it had to be him. It had to be Jack Hughes sending us there in overtime. He's going to clutch up. He's that guy. We're off to the Stanley Cup final here, taking down the Boston Bruins in seven games, making the two goal comeback. I mean, technically it was only a one goal comeback, but who really cares? We reached the Stanley Cup final. So here we go. The first time we made the Stanley Cup final in this video, we have to close it out here. Jack Hughes, he just scored the biggest OT winner of his life. He sent us to the Stanley Cup final, and now we have a chance at winning the Stanley Cup. This New Jersey Devils team has gone through way too much to get to this point. We got to close it out. So Jack Hughes scored the biggest OT winner of all time in Game 7 of the Conference Finals. Now it's time for him to do it again in Game 3 here. Currently, the series is tied 1-1. One one. The winner of this game is taking the lead. And it's got to be the New Jersey Devils, and I got to do it. Ain't no way Jack Hughes just did that in 21 seconds. Split right between the defense. He is that guy. 21 seconds into overtime, I fed the puck to Jack Hughes. And I was like, let this man cook. And that's exactly what he did. We got a 2-1 series lead, and we're not looking back. I am so concerned right now. Game 7, Stanley Cup Final. I can't jump into this one because I scored the OT winner in Game 3 here. We need the New Jersey Devils to play good for 60 minutes. All I need is 60 good minutes from this team. It's all over. We're Stanley Cup champions. Ain't no way this team's going to fold a 4-goal lead. We got a 5-goal lead. It's all over. The New Jersey Devils are going to be Stanley Cup champions in Game 7 here once again. Jeremy Swayman, he couldn't stop us. He's in between the pipes. We picked up five goals on this man, but we got to jump into this one. Okay, it's 5-1 to one now. They're not coming back though. A minute left in this game. Let's jump in. I got to see the celebration. I got to see Jack Hughes hoist that Stanley Cup. And in the final seconds of this one, it's over. It's all over. The drought is over. All of the disappointment is over. And the New Jersey Devils are finally Stanley Cup champions. Jack Hughes is going to get the opportunity to hoist the Stanley Cup. This took way too long. The amount of disappointment this team has gone through to get to this point is ridiculous. But here we are, Stanley Cup champs. But Jack Hughes actually wasn't the true hero here. It was Vic Beck. 16 goals, 14 helpers for 30 points. This man dominated the entire postseason. We wouldn't have been able to do it without him. So here we go. Jack Hughes. He gets to finally hoist the Stanley Cup. That does not look anything like Jack Hughes. I just want to say that right now. Maybe it's the angle. I'm not too sure. Okay, that actually sort of looks like Jack Hughes. Okay, yeah, I'll give it to them. That sort of looks like Jack Hughes. The first angle I saw, I was like, that's not Jack Hughes. 
That's not even Luke Hughes. It's not Quinn Hughes. I don't know who that is, but it's not Jack. All I know is it doesn't look like him, but it is Jack Hughes. He's the captain of this team. He's the first man hoisting the Stanley Cup. This team's been through a lot. Congratulations, Jack. Congratulations to the New Jersey Devils. Now it's time to repeat. Also, why did we just hand it off to Randall of all players? Like respectfully, Mans has been here for one year. I honestly didn't think it would be possible for the New Jersey Devils to ever win a Stanley Cup. The amount of disappointment we've gone through to get to this point is ridiculous. Jack Hughes at 33 years old, he's finally hoisting the Stanley Cup. 9 goals, 18 assists, 27 points. Vic Beck was that guy for us. Thank God we kept Nicholas around. He was incredible. And Jesper Wallstead, your numbers absolutely cooked. An 895 and a 341. How did we win a Stanley Cup? Like seriously, how did we win with these numbers? So the draft wasn't great for us, but who cares? We just won a Stanley Cup. I'm still riding that Stanley Cup high right now. I couldn't care less what happens with the New Jersey Devils from here on out. Jack Hughes finally got a Stanley Cup. We could celebrate. Now this team's definitely going to be a lot worse next season because we have to commit $13.5 million to Vic Beck for the next six seasons. Of course, we have to keep him around, but that more than likely means we're going to be losing Nemec. Also, I'll do one year 2.4 for this guy. That's actually not a bad deal. I'm not doing any more than one year though. This man is bugging. 7.1 for an 80 overall. You're joking, right? Randall, what do you want? $3 million for a 77? Yeah, no thanks. So I thought last season was going to be the last dance for Jack Hughes and the New Jersey Devils, but you know what? I think we have one more season in our team. We have a solid core here. We won a Stanley Cup. We didn't really lose any players over the offseason. I mean, that's a complete lie. We lost two important pieces to the team, but you know what? I think we'll be able to bounce back. Defensively, we're looking the exact same, except for our third pairing here is actually a bit better this season. Bears up to an 82 overall. He thinks he's worth 7.1 million. He's bugging. And to finish it all off, Jesper Wallstead still in between the pipes for us. He's an 89 overall. We got ourselves a new backup he's got fringe starter potential it used to be elite potential i'm disappointed that it dropped that much but you know what we're not going to worry about it we're just going to go get ourselves another stanley cup so here we are second in the entire league back-to-back -back years finishing second 54 21 and 7 the offense were the best in the entire league it actually might be the best it is and defensively we're also the best 2.66 allowed per game i don't know what the difference is with this new jersey devils team compared to the past few years but we're here we're locked in and we're ready to go back to back but unfortunately with all the amazing things happening this season there is some negatives jack hughes has dropped to an 89 overall this is the last dance with the new jersey devils he's picking up 113 points vic beck's got 112 also this guy picked up 39 goals maybe we should have paid him because he's starting to look elite at 24 years old but you know what way the road and to cap it all off jesper wallstead 44 wins this season three shots a 915 to 259 the best season he's had in a handful of years but you know what if these numbers don't translate to the postseason it really doesn't mean too much but what am i worried about jesper wallstead posted terrible numbers in the postseason last year and we still want to stand the cup so let's do the exact same thing this time around. You know what? When it comes to scoring OT winners, I've been pretty elite the past couple seasons. Right now, the game's tied 2-2. Two two. We got ourselves a 1-0 series lead, and I'm ready to make that a 2-0 series lead. So let's lock in. And I don't know what's with this New Jersey Devils team, but for some reason, we seem to perform better on the penalty kill than we do the power play. Lindstrom's going to be picking up the OT winner here, but this goal is really starting with a fantastic defensive play. Nah, real talk, Lidstrom's coming in clutch here, putting his body on the line to block this shot. He ended up poking the puck away and then some nice passing is going to spring up for a breakaway here. He turned on the Jets, he's going to his backhand, the shorthanded OT winner, and we got ourselves a 2-0 series lead. And after that OT winner, the New Jersey Devils are going to keep on rolling here, and they're going to be completing the sweep. So after that dominant sweep, we're moving on to the second round here, and now we have another New York team, this one's going to be the Rangers. Okay, it's safe to say things have not been going our way. We're down 5-2 in this game. We're down 2-0 in the series. I'm going to make the greatest comeback of all time here. What makes it worse is we should have won game 1, and I simulated the rest of the game with us having a 5-1 lead, assuming we would be able to hold on to a 5-1 lead in the third period. The Rangers scored 5 straight goals, and we lost in overtime. So yeah, the series should be tied right now. But instead, we're down 2-0. Now, we have to realize, making a three-goal comeback here, it's definitely not going to be easy. But let's just go goal by goal, and we'll start with the Jack Hughes one. And then with our next goal, who would have saw this one coming? On the penalty kill once again, but this time it's going to be Randall. He's coming up clutch here, and now this is a one-goal game. Okay, seriously, what's going on here? I'm on all-star difficulty. We have seen me play on all-star difficulty. I'm not this good. We just tied this up, scoring three unanswered. We actually might make this comeback. Okay, this is officially the greatest NHL 24 game 
gameplay you're ever going to see from me. We just scored four unanswered, tied this one up. But what if I told you we're not done there? Because big time players make big time plays. O'Sullivan, he's going to be clutching up here. He's going to be picking up our fifth unanswered here. And we got this game locked up. Well, it would be locked up if I knew how to play a bit of defense. Tomasino, he's going to be picking up a goal with two minutes left, but we should be fine. Well, we should have been fine, but Connor Zeri is going to score with 20 seconds left. Now we have to go to overtime. That's great. So after scoring five goals in the third period or something, we're in overtime. It's a 7-7 game. Next goal wins. You already know Jack Hughes is going to be scoring it. So what I say earlier in this game, big time players make big time plays. And you know who's a big time player for us? O'Sullivan. He's going to be picking up the game winner here on the first shot in overtime. I can't believe we just made that comeback. No, like we really were locked in there. Outshot them 21 to 13 in the third period. One goal in overtime. It only took us one shot. They scored five goals in the third period there. But once I jumped in, they only scored two. I scored six or something. Eight to seven, that's the game. That was a massive win for us. And after that massive eight to seven win, I can't believe I'm saying these words. We're gonna win four straight games here and we're off to the conference finals. So we've reached the conference finals once again. There's no reason we should be here. The Rangers definitely should have beat us, but you know what? Since we're here, we might as well win a Stanley Cup. Let's get through the conference finals and then take out the Minnesota Wild or Edmonton Oilers, whoever comes out on that side. So right now, the Buffalo Sabres can't even compete with us. We have a 3-1 series lead. It's 5-5 here in Game 5. Jack Hughes, we're setting you up for another OT winner. It's actually kind of funny that I said we're setting Jack Hughes up for the OT winner because I didn't even purposely score with Jack Hughes. He just happened to be on the ice at the perfect time. He's turning on the Jets here. And just like that, we're off to the Stanley Cup final once again. So here we go we're running it back again this season the new jersey devils versus the edmonton oilers jack hughes and the devils are looking to repeat here Connor mcdavid he's looking to win potentially his first stanley cup i have no clue if edmonton's won this video or not all i know is jack hughes makes big time plays in big time games and he's looking to make another one here now if i'm going to jump into any game during this series it's got to be this one right here we currently have a 3-2 lead in the series we're in game six but we're down three to two can i make the comeback here score a couple goals for this team based on how things were in that rangers game i should be able to pick up a few goals here and get us back into this one i also do want to mention i'm playing on the same difficulty as the Connor bedard video i think i've scored more goals in the past two post seasons than i did in that entire video and unlike the Connor bedard video when we need to score clutch goals that's what i'm able to do and it comes with our big time players but this time it's not going to be o'sullivan it's going to be green tree and with the new jersey devils on the power play and the full pressure bar maxed out who's going to be scoring the goal here O'Sullivan. This man is just built different. I don't know what it is, but when you need a goal, when you need a big time play, put O'Sullivan on the ice and he'll do that for you. And we're just running the clock out here. Just a couple seconds left in this one. I don't even care what we do. Actually, let's try to pick up one more goal. Who cares about picking up a goal? We just won the Stanley Cup. We came back in this game, scored two unanswered. O'Sullivan's making big time plays and big time moments and we just went back to back in Jack Hughes's final season that I'm allowed to control here he's taking home another Stanley Cup and of course the Conn Smythe winner we got to give it to O'Sullivan this man was locked in during the postseason he scored a lot of big time goals what can I say he's that guy of course though this is the moment that we're all waiting for Jack Hughes going to hoist the Stanley Cup here back-to-back -back Stanley Cups for this man he deserves it more than anyone this team went through constant disappointment and here they are going back to back the real question is can they complete the three-peat without me I highly doubt it so we've won back-to-back -back Stanley Cups here Jack Hughes led the way this time 11 goals 14 helpers 25 points however he has dropped to an 88 overall 34 years old I'm not controlling the rest of his career it's time for the CPU to take over are they going to be able to complete the three-peat without me probably not but you know what anything's possible so with jack hughes dropping to an 88 overall he's only got top nine potential right now at 34 years old the cpu is taking over for the rest of his career the real question is can this team win another stanley cup so the new jersey devils definitely took a step back this season but that's not too much of a surprise here they're finishing 12th in the entire league with a 44 31 7 record on top of this team taking a massive step back so is jack hughes only 85 points this year 36 goals 49 assists but he also lost his superstar x factor and he's dropped to an 85 overall this could potentially be Hughes's last season and unfortunately in the postseason it doesn't look like the three-peat's going to be happening because we're going to be falling to the New York Rangers in the second round of five game series also shout out to Nico Heischer on retirement had a fantastic
career. So the team continues to take step backs, but it's not really too much of a surprise. We're so cap tight right now, it actually doesn't make sense. Jack Hughes at 35 years old, he has bottom six potential now and 85 overall. I'm expecting this to be his last season. This is why I'll never understand the simulation in this game. Second in the entire league, 51, 24, and seven. How did that happen? We had one of the best offenses in the entire league and we had an okay defense. The defense wasn't great by any means, but it wasn't too bad. Okay, like that makes any sense. Jack Hughes, 115 points. He had 92 assists at an 82 overall. But unfortunately, when the postseason came around, this team has to be a massive disappointment and they're losing in the first round. That only seems fitting to end this video. Well, I guess we're not done yet because Jack Hughes, he hasn't retired yet. He wants to run it back for another season. And to be completely honest, I'm not overly surprised because he did just pick up 115 points. You gotta run it back again at that point. Also, Kirby Doc, play one more season, my guy. Record one more point to get to a thousand. Okay, he has AHL potential now. Ain't no way he's playing another year after this one. This is the final season. I've been saying that for the past three years now. But the fact that he has AHL potential, I can't see him returning after this one. So Jack Hughes, give us one more fantastic year and ideally take home one more Stanley Cup. So even though the New Jersey Devils continue to decline, I don't know how this team is still so good. Sixth in the entire league, 47, 27, and 8. And Jack Hughes, he's going to see the biggest decline of his career. Only 63 points this season, 30 goals, 33 helpers. At 37 years old, there's only one way we can end this. And it's by locking in during the postseason one last time. The New Jersey Devils are going to go on an incredible run here, led by Jack Hughes. And when it's all said and done, they're going to be hoisting the Stanley Cup in six games over the Edmonton Oilers for the third time in this video. We've beat Edmonton on three different occasions. And just like that, Jack Hughes is going to be hoisting another Stanley Cup. And when it mattered most, that's when Hughes is showing up 12 goals, 15 assists, 27 points in 22 games. He might be 37 years old. He might be an 82 overall. But we already know Jack Hughes Hughes shows up when you need him. Bruh, ain't no way Jack Hughes didn't retire. This was the perfect time to retire. You could have retired alongside your brother Quinn. You could have retired alongside Robert Thomas, but no, you want to run it back for one more year. Retire on top. You're a Stanley Cup champion, my guy. Call it a career now. Jack, what are you doing? You could have retired on top, went out as a Stanley Cup champion, but instead you're going out as a healthy scratch at a 79 overall. I'll see y'all at his retirement. I'm not going to waste my time here. And after chilling the entire season as a healthy scratch, Jack Hughes is finally calling it a career here. He's got 539 goals, 1,018 assists for 1,557 points. Now, Jack Hughes, you had yourself a pretty solid career picking up three Stanley Cups, but man, did you go through some tough years early on. Like the second I took over in 2023-2024, it was just disappointment after disappointment for the first like six or so years of his career. It took until about 2030 before this team started playing good. But once they got things fixed, out this team started rolling and once they were rolling nobody could stop them winning three stanley cups in a short time period there jack hughes heck of a career and if you somehow made it to the end of the video here comment o'sullivan because that man picked up some big points and some big games for us or even comment vic beck he might not have been scoring the big time goals or making the big time plays but he was consistently one of our best players and he was here for all three stanley cups so we gotta show him a bit of respect